guys, it's Pluto time. Pluto, 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 Pluto. No, not you. You've had your day in the sun. Get out of here. God, it's kind of morbid to name a Disney character after, you know, the Roman god of the underworld, isn't it? I mean, I'm, I'm just kind of saying. <laughs> Welcome back to The Stimulus. I'm Seth Epps, and we have a very special episode of This Week in STEM. We are covering nothing but New Horizons news. For those of you that live under rocks and don't have access to interwebs, New Horizons made its historic flyby Pluto this week, and we're going to talk about it. Pluto was discovered back in 1930 by Clyde Tombaugh while he was working for the Lowell Observatory in Flagstaff, Arizona. Tombaugh had been tasked with finding planets beyond Neptune, whose existence had been predicted by William Pickering and Percival Lowell. Due to its sneaky nature and habit of disappearing, Pluto was named after the Roman god of the underworld by an 11-year-old girl who either was really into Roman mythology or had a very morbid sense of humor. I don't know, either way the name stuck. For many years, Pluto was considered the ninth planet of our solar system until 2006 when a very controversial decision was made to downgrade it to a dwarf planet. So why did Pluto get kicked off the cool kids table? The IAU came up with three requirements for planets. The first one is that the body must be orbiting the sun check. The second criteria is that the object must be rounded by its own gravitational force. Again, check, Pluto meets this requirement. The third requirement is that the body must have cleaned out its own orbit, and in this case things quite literally get messy. Pluto is effectively dwarfed by the amount of debris that has remained in its orbital path. So this is what got it kicked out of the planet club. Sorry about it. Despite the planetary downgrade, the nerd herd over at NASA still wanted to learn more about Pluto and its five moons, Charon, Kerberos, Nix, Styx, and Hydra. Enter New Horizons, the fastest spacecraft ever created. New Horizons has seven main scientific instruments on board. The first instrument is RALF, a visible and infrared imager slash spectrometer that is used to generate color, composition, and thermal maps of Pluto's surface. The next instrument is REX, also known as the Radio Science Experiment. REX will measure the temperature and composition of Pluto's atmosphere and serve as a passive radiometer. The next instrument is LORI, or the Long Range Reconnaissance Imager. As you may have guessed from the name, LORI is a camera, a telescopic camera to be precise, capable of taking high resolution images from very large distances, and she's been getting a lot of use on this mission. The next instrument is ALICE, no fancy acronym here, her name is just ALICE. ALICE is an ultraviolet imaging spectrometer designed to analyze the composition and structure of Pluto's atmosphere while looking for atmospheres around other Kuiper Belt objects and Charon. The next instrument is SDC, or the Student Dust Counter. What's really cool about this is that it is designed and run by students. The SDC is designed to measure the space dust encountered by the spacecraft on its journey across the solar system. The next instrument is the SWAP instrument, or the Solar Wind Around Pluto instrument. The name is pretty self-explanatory. SWAP is a solar wind and plasma spectrometer. It will measure the escape rate of Pluto's atmosphere and observe its interaction with solar winds. Wait a minute, Steph, did you just say that Pluto's atmosphere is escaping? Oh yes, I did. Pluto's atmosphere is so large and the planet is so small that Pluto's gravity is not capable of hanging onto the atmosphere, so some of the gases are making a break for it. The final instrument on board the New Horizons spacecraft is PEPSI, or the Pluto Energetic Particle Spectrometer Science Investigation. While this instrument sounds like a knockoff cola that is one letter away from a trademark lawsuit, it's actually pretty awesome. PEPSI is an energetic particle spectrometer that will be used to measure the composition and density of the ions escaping from Pluto's atmosphere. With all seven of these awesome scientific instruments installed, New Horizons launched from Cape Canaveral on January 19th in 2006. Flash forward to nine and a half years and 4.67 billion miles later, New Horizons made its closest fly by the dwarf planet on Tuesday at an altitude of about 12,500 kilometers. Everything went off about as well as it could, and New Horizons is now several million miles beyond the Pluto system. Scientists have already begun downloading data, and while it is trickling in at a very slow rate, they still have some awesome discoveries they shared this week. Let's talk about those. Before New Horizons made the historic flyby, it gave us one of my favorite images, probably my favorite image of the entire mission, this one right here. This image completely redefines how we view Pluto. What was a blue dot in a textbook for me many years ago is now a vibrant, beautiful red planet with a heart-shaped region. The heart-shaped region that you see has been informally dubbed Tomba Regio, named after the guy that found the planet. And if that doesn't give you space feels as it is, his ashes were actually on board New Horizons. I'm not crying, I just have a dwarf planet in my eye. Space feels! Pluto's interesting geology does not stop there. In the first high-res image that we were shown this week, you can see mountains that reach as high as 11,000 feet. That's comparable to the Rockies in Colorado. These icy mountains are very young, no more than 100 million years old, and while that may sound like a lot, when compared to the 4.6 billion years that the solar system has been around, it's not so much. 
The youth of these mountains suggests that Pluto's surface may still in fact be active. So what exactly is forming these mountains? Well, that's a big mystery for scientists. Pluto and Charon are in tidal equilibrium, so the gravitational forces aren't at play there, and there's no larger celestial body pulling on Pluto and heating it up. While scientists don't know what's forming these mountains yet, chances are pretty good that when they figure it out, it's gonna rock the geological world and how we think about planet formations. Another one of Pluto's geological features that caught the eye of scientists was its icy plains. This region has been dubbed Sputnik Planum, after the first man-made object to go into space. As you can see, the region is dotted with irregular polygonal shapes that are bordered by what appear to be troughs and some hills. There's also dark streaks on the plains, which may have been caused by winds. Other parts of Pluto's surface appear to be covered with fields of pits, which may have been formed by sublimation, which is the process that occurs when a solid goes directly to a gas, completely skipping the liquid phase. An example of that here on Earth is what happens with dry ice when it's exposed to room temperature. Now, the surface of Pluto isn't the only interesting thing. It's the atmosphere actually has some really awesome stuff going on too. As I stated earlier, Pluto's atmosphere is massive compared to the actual planet, reaching 1,000 miles above the surface. This allows some gases, specifically nitrogen, to escape. Once the nitrogen has escaped the atmosphere, it collides with solar winds, which might actually be forming a shockwave around the planet. Once the nitrogen particles make contact with the solar winds, they are then ionized and the solar winds carry them beyond Pluto, forming a plasma tail. That's right, Pluto has a tail. How freaking awesome is that? If you don't answer very, then we can't be friends, I'm sorry. Pluto isn't the only thing New Horizons was focusing on. It also took a look at Pluto's largest moon, Charon, seen here. Like Pluto, Charon has a very young looking surface with very few craters, which implies that it is active. You should have heard the nerds in the room when Alan Stern announced this. There were so many oohs and ahs, and I was right there with him, except not in a room. I was by myself, being lonely. Only my dog judged me. It's okay. My personal favorite part of this whole thing, that dark region in the Northern Hemisphere, they called it Mordor. Oh, the memes, so many memes. One does not simply go to Pluto and not snap a picture of its largest moon. If you imitate Sean Bean, do you automatically like put yourself at risk? Do you die? Is that a thing? I hope not. New Horizons also snapped pictures of two of Pluto's moons, Hydra and Nix. Hydra is about 27 by 20 miles in terms of dimensions and is covered in water ice. And as you can see, it's got a little bit of a weird shape, which we talked about in this episode of Twistum. Click the annotation and it'll take you there. Do the thing. Yeah. Then there's Nyx, who's about 25 miles across and a little bit more rounder-ish. So now that New Horizons is several million miles beyond Pluto, what's next? Well, the team will continue to download data. It's coming down at a very slow rate, and it's gonna take them over a year to do so. As for the science mission, the New Horizons team has identified two more objects of interest in the Kuiper Belt. In order to continue the science mission, the New Horizons team is gonna to have to go get some more funding, but hopefully with the massive success that this mission has had, they will easily be a shoe in for it and continue to amaze us with these awesome discoveries in our solar system. As Dwayne Brown so aptly said in yesterday's presser, science never sleeps. So that brings us to our question of the day, guys. What New Horizons discovery has you most excited? Let us know in the comment section down below. As always, if you wanna learn more about what I'm talking about or just check me out on any of my social media, I will include links to both of those things in the description down below. If you like this video and you wanna see many more like it in the future, please feel free to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'm putting out videos every weekend to talk about the latest and greatest in STEM news. And if you haven't already, please go back to Stembox Kickstarter. They have 19 days left and they are not quite to half of their goal. I threw down the gauntlet this week and said that if we got the project 50% funded that I would wrap while doing a headstand and we didn't quite reach that goal. But if we get them 100% funded next week, I will do that. I will stand on my head and wrap and put it in a twist up episode. So if you wanna see me potentially humiliate myself and die on camera, please go spread the word and back that project if you haven't already. I can't speak to how much I support it and how much I love it, so please, Go do the thing. As always, if you find any really cool STEM news stories throughout the week, please feel free to send them to me on Twitter at, at StephS43 using the hashtag twist them, and they just might wind up in next week's show. But that's all I have for you guys this week. Stay well, stay awesome. Good job, New Horizons. Congratulations, and I will see you next time. I'm... Yeah, I did. I totally forgot who I was. The red dot is in the middle of my forehead, so I keep thinking I'm like Katana <laughs> from DC, straight up. <laughs> the recording dot's like right in the middle of my forehead. That's awesome. Cluedo. Cluedo. Short. You missed the joke. Don't mess up the joke. Wreck it, Ralph. I'm gonna wreck it. Capable of taking. La 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 la.
The final instrument on board is Pepsi, or the Pluto Energetic Particle Spot. <laughs> Spectrometer, spe spectrometer, science investigation. The final instrument on board the New Horizons spacecraft is Pepsi, or the Pluto Energetic Particles Spectrometer. Dang it. <laughs> the final instrument on board Pluto. Pluto, not Pluto. It's not on board Pluto. It's on the spacecraft. <laughs> Pepsi is an energetic particle spectrometer that will measure the. Yeah, I just totally lost everything. Pluto. It's billion years that the. Un that's right, you know I was gonna screw up and say universe when I meant solar system. Good dog. <laughs> what is it? Dead gummit! This is the easy one. I know what sublimation is. I don't have to remember it. I just have to say the words. Alan Stern looks like Wash to me. Yeah. He looks like a Tudyk, Alan Tudyk. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Dave's even Alan. Works great, yeah. Alan Stern, you look like Alan Tudyk. Please don't fly ships with reavers around. Just saying. Nailed it. 